Hey guys, last week we played with the phone a little bit, we played with some module, so we played with a camera module, we played with the gyroscope module, and now we have to go back and actually do a little bit more, because there's two that we missed, there's two really important modules that we missed, and we're talking here about the GPS and also the accelerometer, so these two things, we need to cover them, and they're really quick to cover, we're gonna be going super fast through this, because it is really simple stuff, so let's just get right into it, I'll move over to the other scene, so that's my desktop, and for some reason, it is not being captured. Here we go. Um, this is currently a project that we did last week. This is the phone camera. So if I build this, what I get is I can actually see what's around me through the, the phone camera. So this is basically just a base of the Markless AR tutorial we've made. Uh, if you want to have the same exact setup as I have right now, you can go back on the channel, go at the end of this video. There's going to be a link to um, the phone camera tutorial where we just take the phone camera and display it as a background. Now what I'm going to do here is create a whole new script for the GPS because we're going to be splitting that from um, the script we've made in the previous video. So let's open this up. And it is going to be a fairly simple script to create. You'll just have to understand how the coroutine works. So I'll get back into that as we do it. Let's start by declaring um, two floats, one called latitude and the other one called longitude. You could also do the uh, attitude if you want, but I won't actually need it in that tutorial. So public float latitude and longitude. Now let's go and do a start. So private void start. And now if I'm just to explain how the, uh, the process works here really quickly, when you actually try to get the GPS of your phone, you have to go through first um, some permission. So your app needs permission. So that is taken care of when you open the app. But after that, you need to send a request to your phone to actually start using the GPS. So that request takes a little bit of time. It, it's not something that is instant, so we can't do it all in the start. We actually have to start the process in the start function and then uh, get a response back later on. So this is what we're going to be doing here. And this is also why we are going to be using a coroutine. Now, I personally hate coroutines, but that's something I can't avoid in this case. So let's go ahead and just do a start coroutine, so start coroutine like this, and now we need to create a function. So the function is going to be called start location service, just like this, and it doesn't exist right now, so I'll highlight it, then do a control dot, and generate a method for it. If that doesn't work for you, you can simply write it down right here. So the first thing we need to check in this case is, did the user actually enable this? So do we have the permission to use this? So if input location is enabled by user if it is not oh sorry if it is not then we need to actually just break out of this because we can't do anything if he didn't enable this so let's say debug.log user has not enabled gps and since we're in the middle of a coroutine we got to do a yield break in here now let's assume that he does have the permission if he does have the permission let's go ahead and do a input location start so we're going to start the process of actually getting uh, the location service of our device and then we have to wait because it takes a little bit of time before it actually responds to us so we're going to be creating an int right here called max wait and that's going to be for a timeout request a timeout mechanic actually so let's do while input dot location dot status is equal equal to service status initializing and max weight is bigger than zero. So when you do an input location dot start, your status right here is going to be swapped over to location service status initializing. So at the very beginning, since max weight is bigger than 20, you're definitely going to enter this loop. And then in this loop, we do a yield return new wait for a second, only one second. And then we do a max weight minus minus which is going to create a mechanic where uh, this while loop is only going to be called a maximum of 20 time. And that's because of the max weight is equal to 20. And then we do a minus minus here. So in that case, if we actually manage to get out of this while loop, if we actually manage to get out, there is either two reasons. Either we have a different status from initializing or max weight is uh, equal to zero. Now, if max weight is actually equal to zero, we have a problem. So let's do if max weight Let's do is smaller or equal to zero in case something weird happens. Then we do a debug.log timed out. 
because we actually have we still have the same uh, location service status and our max weight is now is now expired so we'll do EL break here now there's also another possibility that the status has been changed but it has not been changed for something that we can use so it can actually fail so we're gonna check right here if input location that status is equal equal to location service status failed if it's failed then it means that uh, we need to actually cancel our operation so down here we'll do a debug.log and let's actually do enable to determine device location and finally a yield break on that instruction so we can actually uh, destroy our whole function right here now in case that it went through those two checks and it's actually working then it means that we do have our service working and at this point we can say well it is started so latitude is equal to input location last data and latitude longitude is equal to the same exact thing so let's do longitude input location last data longitude in this case and yield break to actually finally finish this function and just like this we managed to start our GPS now what I'd like to do since uh, the GPS is something that you use in different places in your code is to actually turn this into something that is static so I do a public static instance so public static GPS instance and I make it a property so set get now in the start I make sure to set that so instance is equal to this also don't destroy all node game object the reason I add these two things is so I can access my GPS from wherever and uh, if I ever change scene my GPS instance still exists so it's still on an object somewhere that does not get destroyed every time we change scene so let me go back in the game really quickly I'm going to head over to my main camera and actually drag and drop my GPS script right here now this one has a public latitude and longitude um, that we can actually visualize through here, but we don't really have a GPS on our Unity editor So we're gonna have to try it out from um, from the actual device itself now to see it on the device I'm going to create a new text under my canvas. So UI text And I'll just make sure to center it make it really big So it's stretching on all axes here. It's gonna have a font size of say 64 and it's going to look something like latitude and then a number so a really really long number why not and longitude same exact thing let's actually center that in the middle and now we just need to create a short very short script that is going to take care of that so i'll go back on my main camera since everything seems to be on there for some reason and i'll call this um update gps text this script is going to be something really simple and really fast just to show you how I access the values uh, from my GPS. So right now I'm on the update GPS text.cs. I'll create a public text object. We don't have to do this if you just want to use the values for something else. But mine, in my case, I want to display it in a text. So I'll do public text. Make sure I include unity engine.ui. And then I'll create, um, I'll name this coordinates. And then in a private void update, here is what I'm going to do. It is fairly simple. Actually, all I have to do is coordinate.txt is equal, and this is how you access it. So GPS, instance, latitude, and then since I need this as a text, I'll do two string. And that's actually, uh, that's actually how you access it. It's going to be really, really simple. Now I'm going to format this um, in such a way that I can actually read it well. So this is going to be latitude. Plus, and then we do latitude to string and here let me just give some space and do longitude plus GPS instance longitude to string and just like that it should actually work if I put my reference because it's public so where is my reference I didn't save properly let me go back save this my update GPS text now has this uh, text field card coordinates and I'm just going to drag and drop it right here all right so we're off for some testing let's actually go under the build settings player settings and change the bundle identifier for say uh, come and 3k GPS YouTube why not 
Okay, and I'm simply going to hit build and run, make sure you are on Android or iOS, depending on which one you like the most, and you're running, and it's actually building right now to my device. So let's have a look at this in the real world. So here we go, latitude and longitude, we're both on zero for a second. That that was when we um, we were initializing our process, but as you can tell, this is working properly. My coordinates are 14 and 121. I'm currently at the Freedom Office. Let's double check if that is actually accurate or not. So here I am right now located inside of Eastwood, and let's have a look at the top here. Coordinates around 14 and around 121, which is exactly what I had on my phone. So. That is pretty much it, that's how we make it work. Now, of course, you can use this value to actually store it to your web server, you can know where your people are, you can know, um, you can actually use it with something else such as the Google Street Map API. So you just send your position value and they give you information back about what's around you and you know what kind of activity, what kind of roads, what kind of river, all that kind of stuff can be done via these coordinates, guys. So that is pretty much it for this video. Um, thank you so much for watching, subscribe for more, and of course, if you want to keep on watching stuff, there's a video right here, there. And that's a really weird way to sit in the chair for a whole video, but I did it. Nice. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and also check out this video right here. We're going to be doing more stuff soon. Next video is going to be about uh, remote, I think, Unity remote, so you can actually test out your games directly in the editor using your phone.